Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. So in today's episode we're going to be looking at 10 lessons that we can learn from Dr. Patrick Bitature. So who is he? He is a Ugandan businessman, multi-million dollar entrepreneur who has an estimated net worth of over 200 million US dollars and had an opportunity to actually feature on Forbes magazine. this channel we talk about business, personal finance, entrepreneurship, scholarship and education abroad and Zambian trending topics. So feel free to pick your playlist on what you enjoy and binge watch that. So before we go further into this video, make sure that you are subscribed, you have turned that notification bell on so that you don't miss any of my videos and also share with friends so that they may also find this information that is very valuable and they can apply in their entrepreneurship journey. I recently attended an exclusive invite-only seminar or webinar where Dr. Patrick Bitature was giving a speech or a presentation on entrepreneurship and business. So I found some lessons very valuable that I actually wanted to share with people who are actually following me on my channel. So Dr. Patrick Bitature is the chairman of Simba Group of Companies. So this is a multi-industry uh, company which invests in various sectors which dates back to his first company that he founded in 1998 being Simba Telecom Limited. From that time he has diversified into many industries such as mining, energy, real estate, hospitality business such as travel and leisure and media investing in Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, making him one of the wealthiest people in Uganda and East Africa. So, let's get right into the lessons. So, lesson number one, think big, dream big. So, you have decided that you should join the entrepreneurship or business journey. So, what do you do? You go and set up a grocery store, or you start ordering shoes and supplying to your families and neighbors. And is that the kind of modern entrepreneurship that we need? No. This is something that anyone can do. You as an entrepreneur, you need to stand out. Be someone who brings something new into the market. Be someone who actually uh, is going to be innovative and creative in whatever you are doing. So think about the bigger picture. Think about the roadmap, like set up a roadmap that you are going to follow and don't just stay in one place. Make that big plan. Start small and start growing towards that big plan that you have. Because you may be operating a grocery store for 20 years. Have a bigger plan. Dream big. And remember, this is the lesson that I actually gave in my first uh, video. Say, have a dream. Dream big is all starts there. Let's go to number two. Moving out of poverty is a need. So what do we mean here? What is a need? A need is simply something like a circumstance where something is a necessity rather than a want. So, for, like, for example, water or food, you need this in order for you to survive. So the time that you program your mind to say, my desire to move out of poverty is a need rather than a want, then that's where change will actually come. Because you are going to work towards that need because you cannot live without it. You know, and most of the times that people that break out of the poverty chain, those are the people that actually come and uplift others and make a name for their family and others also were able to break out of that chain. So be that person who's going to break that generational poverty chain. And it all starts by changing your mindset. As you all know, a continent of Africa with over a billion people and many, many people are living in poverty. For example, in my country, Zambia, it is estimated at least 60% of people, especially in the rural areas, are living below the poverty line. And so, there is indeed need to change our mindset on how we approach poverty as a need rather than a want. Lesson number three. Business equals freedom and not profits. So what do we basically mean here? When you are venturing into business, of course, sooner or later, you are going to make profits. But what approach must you have? As a business person or entrepreneur, you need to view business as financial independence, as freedom, as being in control. So basically, you put it as business equals freedom. Freedom from what? To be financially independent, to be in control of when you work, where you work, and what you are working on, and to simply be in control of everything else. 
Because remember, when you are starting your own business, you are going to set everything on how everything is going to go. So you are venturing into business for freedom. So change your approach and approach business as freedom. Freedom for financial independence, to be in control of your situation, to be in control of your expenses, your assets, and just everything. Number four, solve big problems. So when we're talking about solving problems, it's not just about solving problems, but solving big problems. So these are problems that affect not just your community, but a larger community, such as your country at large. In every economy, there are problems that need to be solved. The people that actually come up with those solutions are the people who are actually going to make those profits. So you can build a business around that problem by providing solutions Feeling that void that is lacking, feeling that gap, you stand in that gap and feel that gap. That's how you are going to actually bring big change by solving big problems. What are the problems that we are facing today? The problems that we are facing today in Africa is lack of electricity and clean drinking water. These are the problems that need to be solved. When you solve these problems, that's where you can actually make profits from. In the short run, you might not make profit, but in the long run, you are actually going to reap big profits. Because if we look at the people who have shaped the American economy today, what have they done? They actually solve problems. Talk, talking about Thomas Edison, he, who founded electricity. Uh, we talk about Henry Ford, who solved a problem in transport. And even recently, Mark Zuckerberg who solved a problem in terms of connecting people, communication. So when you enter into the business or entrepreneurship journey, look at the larger picture, look at the biggest problems that your country or economy is facing and find solution that you can actually apply. Number five, make use of technology. You know, we are living in an age where technology has advanced. Today, you can easily communicate with people because of the various technology advances that we have. We've got the internet, we've got phones, and we can easily communicate with people. Make use of them. Meet up with like-minded people and make solutions. Meet up with like-minded people and encourage each other. Find mentors that can actually help you to be that person that you want to be or make that groundbreaking differences. Remember, some other people are actually ahead of us. So find mentors. Join clubs and just be around people who are actually going to help you grow. Other than that, we can use technology itself to solve these problems that you actually want to find solutions to. As technology comes, make sure you are one of the early people to actually explore it so that you can actually be that person who's actually going to take it further. When you talk about Amazon, it's the largest retailer right now. Jeff Bezos began Amazon in the 90s when internet was not so vast. Payments, digital payments were so difficult, but they jumped onto the web first and they actually moved further to actually push technology advancement further and today they are the largest retailer today. These are opportunities that we don't need to overlook as a young generation. Jump onto these opportunities as they open up and utilize them, make a business out of them, and then all will be history. Lesson number six, value your time. As a young generation, you know, there are so many things that are happening around us right now. People will be going for parties, for discos, just leisure time, you know. But if you want to be an entrepreneur, you actually need to mature faster than the rest. Be someone who's different, who's going to stand out from the crowd. And be someone who's actually going to use their time in a useful way. By utilizing your time to work on useful things that will actually pay off in the long run. You know, most of the time that when we are young, going to 30s and up to our 40s, most of the time people are just playing around, doing all these all sorts of useless things, going out and everything. But the thing is that by the time that you mature and realize that, you know, you've got little time, you'll be already in your 40s going to 50s. And what time do you have now in order for you to actually build something solid? You do Realize that you have lost so much time. So, mature faster than your peers. 
and make that groundbreaking difference because time is very much important. As the saying goes, time is money. Lesson number seven, follow the market. So what do you mean here? Usually the market is providing opportunities and you can do your research and actually jump onto these opportunities. So the danger that we want to avoid here is romanticize our ideas. You know where you fall in love with your ideas, you're so passionate about something and you make something and then try to push it into the market. That's not the way business works. What you actually need to do is go do your research, get what, see what the market needs and then make a product or solution around that and then give it to the market and it doesn't end there continuously see the opportunities that are there in the market the various needs that the market needs and then make your product from there otherwise if we fall into the trap of romanticizing with our ideas we are going to fail because what you think is okay for the market is not what the market actually needs so do what the market needs so if it's product quality make your product of quality Sometimes it's not always about the price being low. That's not always what the market wants. Sometimes the market just needs quality. So work on the various aspects that the market wants. Experiment on top of your research. Continue seeking what the market needs. And that's how you're going to be a good businessman and entrepreneur. So an example was given of Shell Petro, Uganda. So they basically stood out of the crowd by simply introducing a premium uh, petrol. So this was a petrol that you could actually buy at a higher price than what the market was actually offering. This offer you something like better mileage. And when people have that in mind to say, okay, this is actually good for me, people actually go for that premium. So it's not always about price. Sometimes it's about quality. Stand out in terms of quality and push your product. Find a way to charge a premium by offering a better quality. Number eight save to invest so someone asked how can we actually save money but do you know that saving is a trap most of the time that people save money they're just saving money just for the sake of saving and they just keep it there dormant don't keep your money dormant when you save money save that money in order for you to invest let that money give you a 5 to 20 percent return yearly that's how you're actually going to grow do investment whether you're in a job you're doing business when you save money don't let it just be dormant make it work for you let it be generating itself into more yearly let's compare the saving rates in various countries for example let's look at uganda uganda saving rate stands at 21 21 percent if we look at Zambia, the saving rate stands at a whopping 44%. Look at their economies right now. Where are they? Let's compare now to a trillion dollar economy. United States, it stands at 21 trillion as of now. Obviously, as a big economy, we should expect that they should save more, right? But no, the saving rate stands at 7% only. So why is there such a gap? Because Americans, they invest. They don't believe in saving so much now that's the reason that we see credit companies all over they live on credit when they buy a house they buy it on credit when they buy a car they buy it on credit they'll be paying little by little it's better when you buy a house paying little by little rather than paying a lump sum that lump sum amount of money would have gone into investment and that same investment that little profit that you are making out of that investment would have been paying for that house or car little by little at the end of the day you have a lump sum amount of money which is intact so when you save money save to invest number nine someone asked what should we invest in what areas are we supposed to invest in right now so this is what he says he said start small you know why why did he say that this is because most of the time that we young people want to start our businesses or entrepreneurship journey we don't have funds most of the time we see people out there say on Facebook or various platforms saying they have ideas things ideas but they don't have funds they want someone to sponsor them but the thing is that nobody will actually sponsor you if there are no results the thing is that start small, whatever that you can get your hands on, invest whatever amount that you have, say it's $5, $10, invest that amount of money and then grow from there. Don't settle there. Start growing from there going further. And mind you, these smaller businesses that are out there, these are the businesses that are fast growing. You invest 
hundred dollars today, tomorrow there will be hundred dollars. Within two weeks, you already have five hundred dollars. That's the goodness of small, small businesses. But if you are given a million US dollars, for you to actually double it in a month or two, it's very difficult. So you're actually in a better stand to invest that small money and double it very quickly. So whatever you can get your hands on, see the opportunities and start small. Start from there and grow. And as you grow, always have a goal. I always have that roadmap where you are going because that is going to guide you on what you are going to do as you make decisions in the future and as you move from one business opportunity to another as you diversify make sure if you are making a concrete business that is going to stand for a long time leave people who are actually trustworthy to actually manage your company and you're just there to actually see management reports from time to time as you go and focus on various opportunities so start small utilize whatever you have and keep on growing lastly but not the least number 10 so someone asked what of in a situation where the system is harsh in terms of their pressing you down opinion down in terms of taxes licenses and everything this was his response he said pay taxes why is it so? Why do you emphasize that pay taxes? The thing is that at the end of the day, when you pay the taxes, the government is there to provide a favorable business environment for you to actually operate in. They build roads, they make the economy better for you to actually operate in, to make those profits. Where are you making those profits from? From, your, from the same economy. So if you don't pay taxes, that economy can become bad and that bad economy cannot make profits or customers for you. So pay your taxes because at the end of the day, when you have a dispute, where do you go? You go to the courts of law. What makes up the courts of law? The rule of law. And this rule of law is made up of the government. So how are you going to support the government? By paying your taxes. So then what must be your goal? Your goal must be making more profit. If you feel that the government is taking to a bigger cut from your profits, what you need to do is make more profits. Remember, these taxes are cut off from the profits that you are making. So make more profit so that when the government gets their cut, you have enough money to actually enjoy or reinvest in your business. Because you know, they were waste times. Right now, even as we see economies being bad, there are still people who are out there who can write a million dollar check today and give you. And, you know, that means that it's possible to actually flourish in whatever situation that you are in. Because there are worse times, there are worse economies and people are still flourishing. So what more in an economy where you're giving opportunity to actually do what you want? Just be persistent. Sell anything. Grow and do your part by paying taxes. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the video. Make sure you like this video, subscribe and turn that notification bell on if you haven't yet done so. This was Josh Kanjama with yet another investment video. Make sure you share this video with a friend. With this note, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.